Hi, this is Dr. McClellan, and this video is about your financial progress report writing assignment. So, <clears throat> so the, the, the goals for this assignment are actually financial. So a financial progress report focuses on cost per unit, CPU, at each place of purchase of each of your brands. And I'm calling them place of purchase because Amazon's not really, I mean it is a store but it's not a store, if that makes sense. You can call them stores if you want to, that's fine. So what you're looking for is the cost per unit of each of your brands across these three places that can be they can be purchased. So CPU cost per unit is the cost of one unit of each of your brands and it can be as simple as the cost of one pin in a box of 30 or a box of uh, 300 or it can be oh it can be as complex as one ounce of hand soap in a gallon in a gallon um, jug compared to the cost of one ounce of hand soap in a 50 gallon drum. So we break it into, into a single unit of the brands so that we can compare the different sizes of the brands. And this information goes in the next unit's formal report. All of the short reports, the information in all of the short reports will be copied and pasted in two different sections of the formal report. So it is important that you get this assignment right. Email me or text me immediately if you have any problems with any part of this assignment. We can do it together to ensure that you make a good grade on it. So I've got several things here. The video will be here, of course. Um, so in the book, you're reading 7.3 about progress reports. Um, you're reading chapter, you're reading chapter section 7.3 about progress reports and then you're going to refer to the video how to calculate cost per item. It does <clears throat> it does use pounds because it's British. Your cost per unit will be in American dollars and cents. Um, you're going to need to know how to format money in general writing and then this is information about tables, grouped bar charts, and pie charts. You're going to need one table, one grouped bar chart, and three pie charts. Now, you need to Google how to do this on your computer um, and also look at how to do it in, how, in the software you're going to use. So you can use word processing software. I myself use Word on my computer at work. You can use spreadsheet software and you can use computer slide software. So you could use Excel or you could um, use PowerPoint. I do it in Word. Um, what's going to happen if you do it in Word or, or um, for example, PowerPoint? <coughs> it's just going to open up an Excel spreadsheet. So I just go ahead and do it in my word processing software. So you're writing a financial progress report for your research topic. Your audience is me and I'm acting as your work supervisor as, as I have been in, in this assignment. You're going to format your document as an internal memo meant to be attached to a work email. And the difference between attaching it and putting it in the body of the email is your audience um, will probably want to print it and save it as, an, as a separate document. And um, you can't do that if you put it in the body of the email. Be sure to include all the sections of an internal memo. Do not use a template, you know all the rest of it. So let's get down here to this one. So let me pull up my example. And I'm going to split my screen here. <clears throat> okay, so the first section is your memo heading. So you need your standard memo block. Be sure that the subject line includes your three brand names and the words progress report. The next section is the memo's message or body. It should have three sections. Does this sound familiar? It should have three sections, an opening section, a detail section, and a closing section. And the opening section should answer um, why am I reading this? 
and it does this by identifying the purpose of this progress report. And the purpose of this progress report is to present the cost per unit CPU data on all three of your brands at all three of your purchase locations or purchase places. Um, the detail section should answer should answer um, hold on uh, what do I need to know which is a brief summary of the financial data based on your brand CPUs focus on your brands first and so here is where I would be looking so all I'm doing here is presenting information I'm not making a recommendation I'm not expressing an opinion I am just putting that information in there and notice as I go through my document that I have my three brands in an order a specific order the same specific order from the first time that I use all of their all of their titles to the last time I use all of their titles I also put my purchase locations in the same order throughout my document okay and then the closing section should answer what I'm expected to do now oh I'm sorry I clicked I, uh, I skipped one place your information in least to most expensive order if your three brands have the same CPU place them in the order you prefer I'm you know I'm an English teacher I would put mine in alphabetical order if they if they had the same CPU and that happens sometimes where your three brands will have the exact same cost per unit that's fine it doesn't have to be different you don't have to change your three brands so the closing section should answer what am I expected to do now um, explain that this progress report will be followed by a lab report and include your graphics so I left that section blank because <clears throat> I wanted to show you that you don't put all of this um, for example when you do your graphics you can put them all at the end of your at the at the end of your uh, memo but that's really a bad way to, to design it so what I've done is I have my table here because all of this information in this paragraph in this um, I'm sorry in this text block is the information in this table and then I have my charts so here I can either put my closing section I can either put my closing section at the very end of the very end of my memo or I can put it up here in between the beginning of my graphics and um, under my other two sections or I could put it here in the middle there are three ways to do this I like to put my closing section I like to keep all three of my memo sections together so here now remember what I'm expected to do now that I is me your supervisor so um, Um, I need to say what am I expected to do now explain that and explain that this that this uh, progress report will be followed by a lab report um, so what would I what, so if you're typing this what do you expect the supervisor to do next so this information uh, I don't need for this person to do anything yet because I still have to turn in another another two reports I need to turn in the lab report and I need to turn in um, my formal report so this information is an update on the financial research for this for this part the, hold on I'm writing this off the top of my head update on the financial information of the topic of this research project this pro research project um, a lab report 
a lab report will be sent to you on, I like to say by, by, I think this is February 8th is the due date. Yeah, press enter. Okay, so all I've said, I don't expect this person to do anything. So all I'm going to say is this information is an update um, of the financial information of the topic of the pins uh, researched. No, of the pins chosen for this research project. That sounds much better. So this information is an update of the financial information of the pins chosen for this research project. A lab report will be sent to you by February 3rd, uh, 2023. So I'm just letting this person know that this is an update. I just need them to know this information. Now, if you're writing the type of report that you need someone to take this information and do something with it, uh, let's say that's all we were going to do as a financial um, financial research, then this sentence would say, um, I would say uh, this information is an update. Is this information, this research includes the financial information about the, the brands of pens chosen for this project. Um, please make a decision uh, based on this research to choose what pen, what brand pens and what uh, purchase place we will be using in the future. So that person would need to make a decision. And you want to be polite when you say this. And then um, explain if there isn't any other documentation to come after this, then you don't need to worry about the second sentence. But you guys have to do another another uh, short report. So a lab report will be sent to you by February 3rd. I'm sorry, February 8th. February 8th, 2023. And Notice when you do dates, you don't put the ordinals. We may say February 8th, but we don't type February 8th. And then I've got my all my all my different um, graphics here. Now, when you do your graphics, I can't show you how to do your graphics. Hold on. Okay, I'll explain in a minute why I did that. I can't, I can't show you how to do the graphics because you may not use the same software I do. You may do yours in PowerPoint, or you may do yours in Google uh, Docs, or you may do it in Google um, Spreadsheet and then copy and paste it over. You may be using a Mac, in which case I think it's Google Numbers and Google Slides and Google Pages. I mean. Um, Apple Pages, Apple Spreadsheet, or Apple Slides. So I don't know what you're going to use. So no, I can't make you a video of how to do this. What I have done though is I have made these things and I will show you, I can show you what they're what they're supposed to look like according to the instructions. So every one of these needs a sentence that introduces it. This one just says simply, this table presents cost per unit of this research project's three gel, three gel pin brands. And I need to add something to that in three purchase locations. There we go. And this is all of the information. And this is how I want you to do it. I want your I want your brand names to be per row. So these are your row titles. And I want your places of purchase, your purchase locations, to be your column headers. So these are column headers and these are row headers. So when I look at this table, I'm looking at Uniball, Sigma, I'm looking at your first brand, and there's all the three places that you're going to buy it that you're comparing and these are the cost per unit. So these are per pin. And pin. add that, be sure that you add that information to, to, um, 
to your sentences that introduce your graphic. And then I have a caption on each one of these, so be sure that you caption all of your graphics. Now, the thing about working with graphics is that it's going to move it around and you are going to have a multi-page memo. That's okay. This is digital paper. And you're going to have to look at your design. And this is where formatting comes into it. Let me make let me get all my pages up here. Okay, did I have only those? Okay. And what I'm doing is, if you'll notice, I'm leaving my table here rather than moving it down so that I will have two blocks, two blocks, and two blocks on each page. It makes my pages look more balanced. See, because if I move this down, if I insert a page break and move it down and then move this up, I'm going to end up with a page with just one thing on it. And so I'm saving pages and I am keeping the balance of my document overall. <clears throat> now sometimes, you know, a supervisor will tell you put the table on its own page, put the, um, so sometimes you're going to get people are going to tell you put the table on its own page, put the first chart, you know, one type of chart on its own page, and then put all of these charts, all the same charts, on the same page. There it goes. And the reason they do that is because then they can um, so one person, see these are modular documents, so one person may want to just have this information and print this information. A different person in a different job may want just this information, and a different person, an even different person, may want just this information. Now you can do this any way you want to, um, if you prefer to do it, you know, to experiment, but I am perfectly fine with it being like this. Okay. What I'm more concerned with <coughs> is the formatting, the correct formatting of each of these types of, excuse me, of each of these types of graphic. So the table, purchase locations across the top of each of the columns, and the brands in the rows so that I just have to look across the table like this because people read left or right. If you did it the other way, the, the cost per unit would have to go down and that, that doesn't make any sense to the, um, to the human brain. Okay, so now let's go look at our chart, our first bar chart, or our only bar chart. This is a grouped or a clustered bar chart. Um, I don't care if you, uh, I do want, I do care, I want you to have the bars going up and down. So again, here's my sentence introducing. Um, introducing um, what the chart's about, what this particular uh, graphic is about. And I'm going to remember I need to put per pin in here. Okay. So this is the x axis. So the horizontal axis is the x axis and the vertical axis is the y-axis and you should have them grouped in purchase location so you should have office, I mean you should have your first purchase location as a grouping, your second purchase location as a grouping and your third location as a grouping and then each one of your brands is one of these colored bars and make sure they're in the same order and they're all the same color. So this is Uniball Signo here at Office Depot, at Manning's, and at Amazon. And then here's the second pin brand, and it's the second bar in the second color. And then the third one is here. The pilot pins are here. And then on your, and this is this is very important, on your table, 
and on your, your grouped bar, bar chart, make sure that you're using dollar signs. So make sure you're formatting your numbers as currency because you want dollar signs. So I know that, I know just by looking at this, that um, the Uniball Sigma, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Pilot pin is going to cost me twice as much. And it's going to cost twice as much at Office Depot, Mannings, and more than twice as much than the other, two, than the, um, let me say all that again. If I want to compare the zebra pin and the pilot pin, I know that it's going to, the pilot pin's going to cost me twice as much as the zebra pin at all three locations at Office Depot, Mannings, and more than twice as much at Amazon. And I'm not talking about, so the important part here is this is going to be about, so that's not quite 40 cents a pin, a, and this is a a dollar twenty a pin, so it's um, it's actually more. But very quickly, if I'm going to go through and look at this, I'm going to go, oh, that's too much, that's too much, and that one's too much. So I may decide to stay away from this, from this brand to start with. I'll have to play. I will certainly be paying close attention to it when I make my when I do my experiments for my lab report to see if this is actually a good pin and worth the extra money. And <clears throat> You also have to caption this graphic. All, gra all, all graphics have to be captioned. Okay, and then this is the beginning of my three, um, my three um, pie charts. And you know what I would do? I would go. I would go back. And I would make sure that I use the same wording everywhere in my document. Instead of saying uh, purchase location, I would say places, purchase places, because that's what I've used. Okay, so it's always a good idea to be looking back and forth and making sure that you're being consistent, using consistent um, vocabulary. So these are the three charts comparing each pin brands cost per unit per pin in each purchase place. So what I'm doing here, see here, my grouping, my overall grouping are the purchase places. Here, my overall grouping are the are the brands. They're the brands. So here I'm looking at per pin and each location. And so several things. So the title of this pie chart, of these pie charts, are your are your brand names, and then the information, the three different colors, are your purchase places, and be sure that you are using your currency amounts also. Now I can look at this and see that um, that this this pin is twice as much almost as at Office Depot, I'm sorry, at Manning's than it is at Office Depot and Amazon. So I'm not just comparing each cost of the pin, I'm comparing each cost of the pin in each location to each other. Make sure that you caption it. All your charts, all your graphics have to have chart, have to have captions. So here's my second prod, my second brand, and here are my three purchase places, here's my caption, and here's my third brand. Okay, if you need any help making your charts, be sure and let me know. Make, making your graphics, let me know. Um, but honestly, depending on what you're using, um, both the type of computer, the brand of computer, you know, if you're using a, a PC or a Mac, or um, and what type of software you're using to make these, it would probably be, it would probably, um, you'd probably get more help out of looking at, looking the videos up on how to do it on YouTube or um, text instructions on Google because I'm only know, I only know how to work with one. I only know how to work with one. But if you're having a real problem, send it to me, send your graphic to me, and I can tell you 
Um, for example, if you don't have your table correct, I can tell you, um, well, these are supposed to be your purchase places up here in the column headings, and then your brands of your product are supposed to be the row headings. Um, this is not in dollars. Or you have your dollars, they're not formatted correctly. Go back and look at the look at how it's supposed to be done in the reading assignment. And then the same thing here. Um, I am always willing to make comments on students' assignments. If you want to email it to me, or if you want to wait until um, until uh, you've submitted the assignment, I'll make comments on all of this, um, which you know I do because you've already gotten a couple of a couple of assignments back from me by now. Okay, if you have any questions, uh, contact me. And have a good day.